All right, today we're gonna to learn how to animate a character in Pico 8. Now, uh, there isn't any built-in animation in Pico 8. You have to code it yourself. The good news is that it's not super difficult, especially if you're kind of familiar with kind of the basics of Pico 8. Here's basically how it works. You have to draw a sprite on this sprite sheet for every frame of your animation. And then you use code to kind of go in between these frames. So we're gonna start on frame one and we're going to loop through to frame four and then back to frame one. And we're just gonna play this in a cycle like this, but we're gonna do that with code. I already have my basic functions set up, init, update, and draw. And the basic idea is this, every time we update this frame, we're going to update a custom timer. And depending on how fast we want to animate our character, we'll have that switch out the sprite that we're drawing when that timer runs out. But first let's get the basic functionality going without the timer so you can see why we need it. We're gonna start with an if statement that switches out our sprite. Let's make a variable just called sprite and we'll start this with sprite one. So update, so every frame, if sprite is less than our last sprite number, which is sprite four, if less than four, then sprite plus equals one. That's gonna add one to our sprite variable every frame. If it's not less than four, so else, then sprite equals one, because if sprite is not less than four, then it's gonna be four, then we want it to loop back around to this first frame. So now we have the logic, we need it to draw it. So let's use this command SPR, which draws a sprite. First argument it needs is the sprite number. So we'll just pass in our variable sprite. Then we got to tell it where to be. So I'll just say 63 comma 63. That'll just draw it in the middle of the screen. And that's all we need to do to, um, to do this wrong, basically. I'll save this and run it. Oops, forgot to clear the screen. CLS, there we go. And now we have him just losing his mind, just going so fast. So that's the reason why we need the timer is because if we don't slow this down, this is gonna update 30 times a second and he's just gonna go way too fast. So we need to delay this animation here. So let's just wrap this in another if. And it's gonna be kind of similar actually to this right here. So let's make a new variable. Let's call this sprite timer or S timer and we'll start at zero. And so now let's say if S timer is less than however fast we wanna animate, let's say 10, then, then we're going to add one to our timer, S timer plus equals one else we do this and then we reset our timer. S timer equals zero. And then we gotta end our if. So I'm gonna make sure that we tab this in just right. So what this is going to do is every frame, it's gonna check this variable S timer and it's gonna see if it's less than 10. If it is less than 10, it's not gonna do anything except for add one to our timer. First frame, it'll end up as one, second frame is two, three, and so on, until this isn't true, until it gets to 10. Then, once this hits 10, it's gonna do one frame of animation. It's gonna switch our sprite number. If it's less than four, it's going to go one more. If it is four, then it's gonna go back to the beginning. It's gonna go to our first sprite, and then it's gonna reset our timer. So let's see if this works. There we go. So now he's animating, but it's at a reasonable rate. So that's a simple way to add a little bit of animation. Let's make this a little bit more useful by replacing some of these with variables. Starting here, this S timer, this is gonna be kind of like our speed, okay? So let's say any speed equals 10. We're just gonna replace this. And if sprite is less than four, what this is really doing is we want this to be our last sprite. So we'll say last frame equals four. Let's say our first frame equals one. So now sprite, if sprite is less than our last frame, else we want to put it to our first frame. Okay, so now it's easy to change everything up here in our init function, which is just a good thing to do. Then you don't have to hunt through all your code. Once everything gets a little more complicated, you can just change these variables up here, makes it a little easier and it should still run just the same. Ah, beautiful. 
We can also link all of this to some logic. Let's say if we are hitting a button, we could wrap this all in an if, if button, right? Then we do this. So now this won't animate unless I hold down the right button. So you could do something like have your character walk back and forth. But that's basically how you'd animate something in Pico 8.